Thanks very much, Mike. I'm so impressed with the histology, analyzing the histology and the overwhelming importance of the calcium that Dr. Vermani pointed out. But anyway, uh, let me talk a little bit about the uh, options we have. So uh, obviously the effect of calcium is so impressive, as you've just seen, that, uh, and then circumferential calcium is a major, major predictor of a difficult outcome. And directional atherectomy is promising for most plaque that's not severely calcified. And uh, uh, directional atherectomy can result in complications. We've had a, ca a case in Pittsburgh of perforation and subsequently a major, major lawsuit over a perforation. So obviously calcium is a major, major issue. So then when we look at Dr. Monty pointed this out very nicely, the distribution below the knee and above the knee, and you can see below the knee is almost very extensively chronically organized calcification, and certainly above the knee has a share, but only 35%, but nonetheless significant. So when we look at lesion length, we also know that lesion length, in addition to calcium, is a predictor of major problem in outcomes, especially lesions that are 10CM. And furthermore, we can point out here that the primary patency rate between the patients with the DCCB and DA is 90% for patency with atherectomy and 68% with uh, DC balloon. So uh, complication rates about the same for both, and certainly no major, major complications, 4%. Now, this slide from Fennelli published here recently shows you really a nice uh, distribution of the difference between late lumen loss and patency. When you get out into the, when you have the 25% quadrant here, everything's fine. When you get into the 75% and 100% diffuse calcification, then you can see the significant drop off in the patency to 50-60% and the late lumen loss up into the 70-80% range. So clearly, uh, I think it's no secret the problem that calcium presents. And here you can see uh, a patient that we did, this is done some time ago, was a complex case with, a, with common femur involved and a deep femur involved. And we subsequently, with atherectomy, we were able to recanalize and we established patency in the perineal and certainly patency in the popliteal. So there's no question it has a lot of value. And uh, you can see what we did, we took, we used a fair amount of jet stream to give you some idea of what we're doing here. And you can see the jet stream rotation, but some aspiration to it. But we did a, 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 a bovine bone and you can see the normal bovine and with the jet stream, we create a lumen, we create a larger lumen with a larger jet stream, so especially with the gates up. So the question comes is that, are we creating a lot of damage to these vessels? So an interesting paper by PK published and surprisingly got very little attention in 2010. So 116 patients that he did with directional atherectomy had injury in 53% of the cases. And restenosis from a composite of the Injured and non-injured, 57% restenosis in one year. But if you take the patients that were injured, and with obviously the issue with restenosis, 97% with restenosis, and restenosis without injury, very, very acceptable, 11%. So I'm surprised that that paper didn't get more attention because we're concerned. We did that bovine analysis. We were concerned that the fact that we could erode bone. And again, again, here's just a simple diagram also from Langhoff demonstrating uh, the uh, severe calcification with both directional atherectomy as well as drug coated balloon. You can see a major drop by 53% and 42%. So, again, they're fine with no calcium, but the problem is with extensive calcium, it's become a serious procedure. So, when you look at a 12 month primary patency for all the devices, all the devices, here's Supera, here's another, here's Zilver, here's uh, non drug following stent, and uh, Viabon, and then subsequently atherectomy. So here's the, here's the atherectomy. Fairly acceptable in that one, one series here uh, that compares favorably with Sapira and with Zilver. So yeah, I think that atherectomy works in situations that are not severely calcified. And it's just a couple quick little cases to show you how effective it can be. Here's obviously common femoral development and some extension into the SFA. And then subsequently with atherectomy, drug coated balloon, you can see a very nice result. It's no big deal. All right, let's show you one interesting case. This was a very, very early case that we did. 58-year-old uh, male with coronary artery disease, prior CVA, hypertension control, and uh, has also a complex disease that's common femoral, but also deep femoral and very narrow SFA. So that was effectively managed 
with awfully filter. I think it's universally you must use a filter if you're going to use the atherectomy devices without any question. But you can see after we uh, get the SFA open and the common femoral open, when we turn our attention, take the filter out, put the filter in the deep femoral, and then also with the uh, silver hook at that time, open this up with a nice result. But more importantly, so we got a good result. That was no big deal. So uh, on the follow-up, though, it was interesting. At six-month follow-up, the ABI was now 1.1. At two and a half years, it was 109, and a three-year follow-up was 107, so long-term follow-up impressive in some situations. However, how impressive is it? Well, is it as impressive as endarterectomy? Because common femoral is really no landing zone, and the results with surgery have overwhelming. The five-year survival rate at 74 to 90 percent, five-year survival with, with the surgery. So it's something we just don't ignore at the common femoral. Although we, we could get by with it, I think you can't forget. I just have one other few slides to show you. We're not impressed with drug coated balloon technology, the science of it. So we have an interest, and I'm fortunate to be on the faculty at CMU, the engineering faculty. So we're looking at we're looking at other options for, for drug drug coding. And I think controllable elution systems might be a solution. We're still working on that. So the drug coated balloons have stimulated other evolving technology, and we think con controllable drug elution might be the way to go. So this is a stent. This is a self expanding stent. But on the surface of this stent is a nanopore surface. So the whole stent is covered with a 2.5 microgram nanopore surface. And what that does, you can see. So this allows you to use whatever drug you like through the pores. You can use any of the Lymus drugs, and certainly Paclitaxel is not an issue. But it gives you some freedom. And for certainly the matrix, we, we just the, the matrix is an alloy, so then the, the drug that we put on there can be anything. It can be heparin, it can be whatever you like. Pour it into the matrix because it's a pore. So then you decouple the matrix, and then it's a very simple, simple coding mechanism. And then the value is it gives you somewhat more of a homogeneous distribution, but still not perfect. You can see the inadequate transmural position here. So fortunately, and you can see again, even though this is a stent, we still have the limitation that wherever the struts are, it is definitely not coated at that site. But nonetheless, I think this is interesting technology. The, the, the nanopore surface, and it's an alloy, it's a metallic alloy, and 2.5 micrograms doesn't interfere, doesn't interfere with flexibility. So I think there's some, some importance to that. So working with the engineering team at CMU, we think we maybe come up with something. So what's the take home message? The take home message is that drug eluding technologies and atherectomy have major limitations in the calcified vessel without any question on that. Drug coat of balloons show promising results in the SFA as an adjunct to DA and to PTA. So embolic events. Uh, embolic events, we have ignored embolic events, and that's time now that we start considering seriously embolic events. If we did an MRI study on all the patients who've had embolic events on the leg, the way we do on the brain, I think we'd be startled. And I'd, I'd like to see that trial. And again, when we look at the embolic, then the filters, we use the filters universally, and the filters are not all equal. I think you have to be very careful, because the best you can do with the filters, no matter how good, is 200 microns. So you're not, we're not capturing anything under 200 microns, regardless of what filter you use, or what stent, or whatever. So that leaves you all the 100 micron particles are in the leg. So uh, again, I think uh, all the common formal outcomes are not better than surgery, quite frankly. And I think for the uh, complex pole and SFA, I think the superior outcomes that we see, the superior, that slide I showed you, the superior outcomes, at least in our experience, have been as good as any of the uh, atherectomy devices. Thank you.